Erectile dysfunction can have a fundamental effect on one's emotional and mental health, not to mention intimate relationships, and a lot of men suffer in silence when dealing with this. Joining me now to chat about some of the treatments for erectile dysfunction is Dr. Mark Opperman. Doc, welcome. Good to have you back. Well, good to be here, Michael. Thank you. Now, let's talk erectile dysfunction because that is one thing. But as I mentioned in the, in the introduction, the mental aspect of it is huge as well. What do you see when couples come to you for treatment um, when there's erectile dysfunction in the mix? How do they react to each other, to you, to the situation? How does that work? Well, Michael, firstly, I never call it erectile dysfunction. Okay. I call it sexual dysfunction. Right. 90% of erectile dysfunction sits in the brain. Okay. As you said, um, not being able to get or maintain an erection has severe psychological effects mm -hmm. on men. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting when, when I treat a patient with severe sexual dysfunction, I always ask that he brings the spouse or the wife or the girlfriend in. Um, men react as follow. If I can't get an erection, I withdraw from a situation that can possibly lead to a sexual um, intercourse. Right, right. Why? Because it puts, it embarrasses me and you know what, it's scary to go there. It causes a great deal of anxiety. And the moment that men do that, the partner feels I'm, he either doesn't see me as attractive enough or he's having a relationship with someone else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And immediately they become, uh, the situation becomes uh, quite volatile in the sense men withdraw, women uh, become suspicious and attack. Mm -hmm. um, and this, as you said, has a great impact on the mental well-being um, of, of people and these couples. Yeah, and it's so tragic because I mean there, there are solutions out there and first and foremost before you even go anywhere just to open up those channels of communication. communication. But Absolutely. Because as society we don't talk about it. It's very difficult to initiate that opening of those of those communication lines. Well not only because it's difficult to communicate that. Traditionally you know it as an alpha male I, I don't have problems like that. Right. That's the one. But the moment that you do open up you know, it, it's, uh, and this is the defense mechanism, I think, for, for where genders are different, is women become insecure um, and, and go on a witch, witch hunt, mm. um, even if the communication is open, mm. because it's embarrassing for both parties. So, Mark, in terms of treatment for, for sexual dysfunction, as you call it, um, what are the options? Because, I mean, traditionally, what has been the standard practice with medical practitioners and, and what is out there that's a different approach? You know what, Michael, so for the past, I would say almost 20 years, we've had prescription medication and that's your GP's only choice. Mm. We now have different options. In, in my practice, specifically, there's six. Okay. And I like to combine all six of them. Right. So, let's, let's break it down. Firstly, you have the mechanical issues. I always call it the plumbing. Right, yes. And you have to fix the plumbing. There's a lot of things that have an effect on erectile tissue. Mm -hmm. This is the penis. And what we need for an erection, basically the only thing we need for an erection, is proper blood flow. Right. Now conditions like hypertension, um, diabetes, depression, anxiety, the medications that we prescribe for those conditions have a negative impact on blood flow okay. to end organs. Right. And therefore weaker erections. The moment that that happens, you have other consequences, most of them psychological. Right. So how do we fix this? Regenerative medicine, and specifically two types. We spoke about this before, platelet-rich plasma. Yes, it's just brilliant. refresh us on what that is. Platelet-rich plasma is the component of blood that we get when we centrifuge the blood and we split the red blood cells and the white blood cells from the platelets and the plasma. 
platelets responsible for healing of damaged tissue right. and they release growth factors. It's viscerate we're after. And platelet-rich plasma will stimulate repair of damaged tissues, in this case, most probably blood vessels, right. stimulate the production of new blood vessels, stimulate the production of and repair of nerve tissue, as well as stimulate the production of new tissue. So not only do you get better blood flow, you get more sensitivity, okay. and lo and behold, a bigger penis. Right. So you know what, we start with regenerative medicine, PRP, and then we add to that, and this is quite new, electrostimulation, bioelectrostimulation. So okay. microcurrents that specifically target certain cells that then stimulate them to repair or regenerate. Okay. So I love to combine those two. We use them separately in certain instances, but this is brilliant. Right, right. So that's the mechanical part of it. Then we have the prescription medication. And what we have, you know, at Ask Your GP, there's the 72-hour one and the 24-hour <laughs> one. Yeah, one is yeah. blue, the other one is yellow. Right. So we leave it at that. But that's traditionally where, they, uh, where we go. We have an injectable, which a lot of people don't know about, which is a prostadol, and it causes vasodilatation. Okay. That was ab around way before your oral medications were around. So those are the three options. Then let's leave them there. Now we have something that's quite new and innovative, and that is your peptide therapy. Okay. Peptides being the building blocks of hormones. And what peptides do is they stimulate the normal me metabolic pathway. The one that I use in my practice is an oxytocin analog. Oxytocin B uh, stimulates the limbic system of the brain. So all those pleasurable centers, the right, feel good yes. centers okay. of the brain. And I give it specifically for the patients so that they wake up in the middle of the night with an erection. They wake up in the morning with a morning erection so that they start realizing but this is still functional. Yes, absolutely. It so that's takes the head that side. Right. Exactly. Right. So it takes that anxiety, but this thing is working. I can get an erection. I can wake up in the morning with an erection and I have to pee in the shower. Yes. So, you know, but that for me is 90% of a battle one. Okay, okay. So your peptide therapies that we, we add to that. Then we have something that's brand, brand new, and that's neuromodulators. Okay. Toxins. Right. Okay, your, your botulinum toxin. And it's contraintuitive. Why would you put something that relaxes or takes away muscle action into a penis? Because the blood vessels in the penis have muscles around them. And if we can relax that muscle, we dilate the vessel, better blood flow into the penis. Okay. So, you know, combining those options uh, in a one treatment plan has phenomenal benefits for right. patients who battle with sexual dysfunction. And I think it's fascinating because as you say, it's about fixing the mechanics, but also getting their head right around it. So Absolutely. that you're not fixing the mechanics and then the head just brings it all down, if you'll pardon the pun. So it's a, it's a good interplay there. You know what, one of the things that when I started my practice was I realized for your patients in the late 40s, the 50s and 60s, we are now at a place in our lives where the children are out of the house. I should be able to run around naked. Mm. I should be able to sneak up on my, my wife or my spouse as she's bending her over the washing machine. Um, but you know what, if I have to go and take my tablet to go and do that, Half an hour later, you know what, she's mopping the floor and in no mood for, for anything, uh, you know, but other than get out of her house. Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know what, by restoring function, you restore 
spontaneity in relationships and therefore the relationships are strong. Indeed. Mark, there's so much more to explore on this and I think we'll have to carry it over to next week because there certainly is some, some interesting stuff I'd like to broach with you. But just before we go, if people are interested in, in some sort of treatment that they may be recognizing in themselves um, that this would be appropriate, how can they get hold of you? The easiest to get hold of us on the T-Clinic website and literally just look for the T-Clinic. Okay. Uh, telephone number 010 824-1393. Wonderful. Mark, we'll be catching up again in just a short while and I uh, look forward to continuing this discussion with you next week. Thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Excellent.